אנו מכריזים בזאת על טדקס בי.ג.י.ו. This morning I woke up and went to my morning run using my smartwatch. This watch watch is really amazing. It collects a lot of information about me, about my speed of running, about the distance, even my heart rate. And immediately when I arrive home, I can see that all the information is already stored in the cloud. And even it can measure my stress level. Let's see. Now it's 90, I have another 10 to go, at least while standing. Next, When I finish to make a bathroom, I go to my work using my connected car. How come my car is already connected? I'm using ways in my car. And this way is connected to the Internet. In the future, every car is going to be connected to the Internet, and it's going to be part of the IoT uh, revolution. Today, the cars are connected because of the application that we are having inside our car, but in the future, cars are going to be fully connected and are going to be even autonomous. Then, when I reach to my office, usually I like to play with the latest gadget. You know, when you are doing a lot of research in the domain of IoT, you can play a lot with these IoT devices, and you are buying many IoT devices. One of them is the Google Glass. You see, even a glass started to become smart. And this smart Google Glass, what we can do with them, We can actually navigate the Internet and see many things via a small display and a camera. And in the future, such glasses will even be able to tell us if somebody in front of us is lying or not. And then, when I'm coming home, I go immediately to my smart fridge to grab something from the fridge. This fridge is smarter. Why it's smarter? It includes a very, very nice display. Via this display, I can order groceries, and in addition, it has a very nice dashboard where my wife can rem- put me all the tasks that I have to do during this day. Then, I have to play with my latest drone at home in the evening. This drone is really amazing. You can take a lot of photos with it. It's also connected to the Internet via the mobile phone. In the future, drones are going to be completely autonomous and are going to bring us groceries to our house. In the late evening, I like to go to watch movies in my smart TV. This smart TV is also connected to the Internet and allows me to access to many, many content providers and get a lot of interesting videos and content. In the future, these smart TVs will know automatically what we're supposed to watch, what really interests us. All these things that I described to you are actually part of the Internet of Things revolution. These are IoT that are interacting today with them. And in the future, we are going to do even more. So as you saw, many devices that we are using today are going to become connected to the Internet and are going to provide us much better services. Why IoT is so important? Mainly because in the past, for example, we had a heart rate monitor. The heart rate monitor could collect information about our heart st- status, and then to provide us a prognosis about what is the status of our heart. In the future, there's going to be an IoT heart rate monitor that is going to collect a lot of information about our heart, is going to send it to the cloud, and in the cloud, very strong servers are going to make the diagnosis and send it to us back. So the revolution is really, really profound. But let's talk about the privacy risks. You know, IOTs collect a huge amount of information about us, which is stored in the cloud. This information is going to be analyzed in order to provide us better services. But on the other hand, if somebody will manage to get this data, he will manage to violate our privacy. Let's go to one very, very sexy example. This is a smart vibrator that a company actually developed. And this smart vibrator is actually activated via the mobile phone. What actually happened is that this company collected a lot of information about the patterns of usage of their customers, and eventually their customers went to court, and they had to pay $10,000 for every user because they potentially 
violated the privacy of their customers. But to understand really the problem, let's go back to my day, to my day of interacting with many, many types of IoTs. Let's see what may happen if somebody is going to get the data or somebody will manage to compromise my specific IoTs, what will happen to my particular privacy? First of all, let's start with this very interesting smartwatch. Try to imagine that I'm sitting in my living room in front of my smart TV, and suddenly the police knocks on my door. And they enter into my living room, and they tell me that they have a fine for me because I drove while I was intoxicated. So I have alcohol in my blood. How come the police knows that I have alcohol in my blood? Well, we did a research in Bangor University where we managed to collect information from the smartwatch and connect it to the level of alcohol in our blood. In other words, the information that this smartwatch collects can be translated into the amount of alcohol in our blood. But how come the police knows that I was driving when I was intoxicated? Please recall the connected car. My car is connected. So actually, in the cloud provider of these connected cars, there is knowledge when I drove. So if you correlate the data from the smartwatch together with the data from the connected car platform, you know that I drove actually when I was intoxicated. This is just one example. Another example, if somebody will manage to compromise my smartwatch. I told you before, this smartwatch knows what is my level of stress at every point in time. Imagine yourself that I'm in the middle of a poker game. Somebody can derive immediately a conclusion whether I am bluffing or not. And these are just examples of what may happen if somebody will manage to compromise either my IoT device or the content of information that was delivered from my IoTs to the cloud. Next, let's go to my connected car. Every connected car is reporting its location to its cloud service provider. So if somebody will manage to hack into the cloud service provider, they will know the location of many, many cars in a specific country. Now, what is the value of this information? First of all, you can analyze this data and derive conclusion about where the person is living, where he is working, and if you are really a very sophisticated thief, you can even know to pinpoint every BMW exactly where he's standing at night in order to do a targeted theft. Not targeted attack, targeted theft against the particular owner of the car. Now let's go to these smart glasses. Smart glasses are connected to the internet. So literally an attacker can compromise a specific piece of Google Glass using a malware. In addition, there are many ways to compromise a personal computer inside a company. We managed to develop a very intelligent malware that literally managed to create a very smart blinking on the screen of a PC, and by that, modulating and sending the data to the smart glasses and from the smart glasses to the internet. So actually, it is justifiable that many companies do not allow to bring smart glasses into the premises. Because if the smart glasses is compromised, it can be used to leak a lot of information from the organization to the attacker. Next, let's look at this interesting smart fridge. Imagine yourself that you are sitting at your home, navigating your notebook, and suddenly you get an amazing advertisement for a diet program. If it will happen for me, probably it's a false positive. But think about a general person that receives such an advertisement. Why it may happen in the future? Our student discovered that a smart fridge is actually sending information to the cloud each time that we are opening the fridge. In other words, when you analyze the data in the cloud, you can use analytics to derive a conclusion that somebody is actually fat. Now, based on that, somebody will send me an advertisement. But what could be even worse, that somebody will not give me an insurance because they know my eating habits. 
just because I'm using this smart fridge. Let's go to a drone. I described to you me playing with the drone. But me playing with the drone, maybe it's not my problem. My problem is my neighbor that is playing with the drone. My neighbor can use a drone above his premises, and he may use it to invade my privacy. And I will not know that it's actually happening. We developed in Ben Gurion University a very destructive research in which what we did, and here you can see even my house, we use a stimuli on the window such that if somebody is photographing with a drone our window, we can intercept on the air the encrypted traffic from the drone to the operator of the drone. And since we see that there is a correlation between the physical stimulus on the window that we are creating and the amount of traffic, encrypted traffic, that we receive, we know for sure that actually somebody is photographing us and streaming this data encrypted to his own PC, which tell us that actually somebody is invading our privacy. What to do with it? It's another big story, how to stop the drone from flying. Let's look at our smart TV. You know, a smart TV is connected to the internet. It's a part of the Internet of Things revolution. If somebody will be able to compromise my smart TV, he will be able, first of all, to know what I'm watching currently in my TV. But many, many smart TVs also possess a microphone and a camera. And using that, an adversary will be able to compromise our bedroom. That's very, very risky as well. To conclude, in the future, we are going to interact with many, many IoT devices. These IoT devices are going to collect a lot of information about us. This information can be used to provide us better services. But on the other hand, if this information is going to be leaked to an adversary, he will be able to use it to learn many, many things about us and to compromise our privacy. And it's mandatory that whoever is managing these services will make sure that he is using the best security technologies to protect our privacy from any potential violation. Thank you.